Hi, welcome to my podcast, Talking Travel with Wendy. I travel the globe interviewing really cool people in small hospitality and tourism businesses. Join me each week as I discover and share something or someone new with you. You can find more at www.travelwithwendy.net. And remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking travel about Bad Waldsee. Bad Waldsee is an upper Swabian town in Germany not far from Stuttgart, close to Bavaria, Ravensburg, and the Bodensee or Lake Constance. Austria and Switzerland are within easy driving distance too, making it a great weekend getaway or a wonderful addition to a traveling European itinerary. We had glorious weather for our visit to this German town this past September. We had a great day for hiking, watched boat races, enjoyed wonderful cuisine, and relaxed at another thermal spa. The history of Bad Waldsee is fascinating. It was first named as a town in 926 and eventually became a township in 1298. It survived a plunder by the Hungarians and a time in the Prussian Habsburg House. In 1806, it became part of the Kingdom of Württemberg. And in 1950, during the War Reconstruction, the town introduced its first mud bath, or Morhilbad, believing mud had therapeutic properties. Being so close to Ravensburg and under an hour from the Bodensee, many Europeans find this historical German town a great holiday away from home. So we began our tour with a stroll around the lake, or the Lakeway, Seeweg. This trail skirts the Stadtsee, or City Lake, and also has a playground for children, a labyrinth, oversized lounge chairs, mini golf, ice cream stands, and a beautiful view from every direction of the city. It's a peaceful and relaxing stroll, and this weekend happened to be the annual Dragon Boat Competition. It was so super cool to watch. They had every category, too, you could imagine. Teams, singles, female, male, youth, and it was intense watching the spectators as well. We followed the trail around the lake to the other side along the Uferweg, or the Riverside Path, and found restaurants with patio seating, boat rentals, coffee shops, and more playgrounds. This was definitely a family-friendly German town. Take any gasse or alley from the Uferweg towards the Old Town District, and you can admire all the Baroque architecture on your way, including St. Peter's Cathedral, the Alten and Fliegeheim Spittel zum Heiligengeist, which is the Church of the Holy Ghost of Bad Waldsee, and the Rathaus Town Hall, as well as many, many more. We began our walking tour around town by following the Kloisterhofstrasse, west up to St. Peter's Cathedral. This landmark is the center of town and also had public restrooms. They were only open for certain hours for the weekend due to COVID and the boating competition, but I have a feeling they're open normal hours in other times. St. Peter's Cathedral was first mentioned in 1100 as part of the Augustinian order of canons, meaning the monks and the friars lived within the community and ruled here, and this order remained in power until 1788. The new church is believed to be built in 1479 during the Baroque era with two angled towers that were unique and a bit off-center in both frame and design, which was not typical for the period. The theme of the altar is the coronation of Mary and the two side altars are dedicated to Mary and Joseph. The ornate gilded design and decor of this church are definitely from the early Renaissance period. Another historical landmark is the Versacher Tor, or the tower, the gate tower. This impressive tower on the east side of town was built around 1400 and as the city continued to grow during the 1200s was primarily an agricultural town. This gate tower was created to help ward off approaching enemies, possible fires, and collected tolls. The City Hall, or Rathaus, is a massively impressive building and was originally built as a jail or a place of justice around 1426 by then-Mayor Ulrich Kurer. He was a builder and visionary for the growing town. Unfortunately, this site also became the site of witch trials and 17 Waldsee women were found guilty and sentenced to death. By 1610, under Austrian rule, the right to vote was created here, and today you can see the sculpture of Justitia in the design, who represents the balance of justice as well as the coat of arms for both Austria and Waldsee. If you're visiting on a day trip to Bad Waldsee, I advise that you park at the Parkplatz Bleich, which is a large parking lot and is open 24 hours. 
You can find the links to this parking lot in the podcast description. On day two, Katie and I decided to hit a local hiking trail around the Schloss Sea or the Castle Lake. This smaller lake within city limits feeds into the Stadtsee or the City Lake. We began the trail at the Bad Waldsee Castle, and this castle is not open for visitors. However, today it is used as state offices and businesses, and it's still beautiful to photograph and walk around the grounds, and the trails that lead to the Schloss Park are right behind the fortress as well. These trails were well marked, although not as pristine as the Stadtsee on the other side of town. It did give us a different perspective of the town and the lake itself. We had our hiking boots on, it was a gorgeous day in nature, and this hike was much smaller and seemed to have more of an ecosystem and marine life. The trails are paved and easy to follow. We saw a few bikers, families with strollers, and lots of walkers on this trail. Do you like the information I'm sharing in my podcast? Be sure to let me know by following, making a comment, and liking it. This is how I create individual itineraries for my clients, too. I take into account how they like to travel and design an adventure specifically for them. To find out more, check out my website, travelwithwendy.net, or book a trip with me. The links are in the description below, too. Okay, back to the podcast. One of the reasons we wanted to visit Bad Waldsee was to visit another thermal bath, the Waldsee Therm. This was a very nice bathhouse. However, I would categorize it more as a therapy bath rather than a romantic bath. In all fairness, it probably has many more amenities and pools to enjoy, but because of COVID, most of their pools were closed. They do boast for having the hottest thermal bath in Upper Swabia, and they have many water therapy sports classes that you can join too, including water cycling for those in rehabilitation. One of the coolest highlights at this thermal bath is the pool that has underwater music. It was so cool, transfixing. Katie and I didn't want to leave. Unfortunately, it was also the busiest of the pools, so after a little bit, we made our way back to the outside warm pool. And the Bad Waldsee Therm also has saunas and massage services available as well. For more information on bad towns of Germany, check out last week's podcast on Bad Kissigan, another delightful northern Bavarian town that is a great weekend getaway. Bad Valsi is also filled with culinary delights. From coffee shops that line the lake to vine stubas or wine beer pubs to some great restaurants, we were delighted with Bad Valsi's gastronomy. The first place we stopped was Cafe Zeit im Hecht. This restaurant is located along the lakefront and is a perfect spot to grab a cup of coffee, an afternoon cocktail, or just take a break from touring to rest. Another fun stop in the heart of the city or Marktplatz is Café Weinstube am Markt. The market square in Bad Waldsee was hopping on Saturday morning with craft vendors, produce, meats and cheeses, and I love these fresh markets in these little German towns. You can chat with the farmers, their families, and they are passionate about what they grow. So after we toured around town, we came back to the market square for a mid-afternoon refreshment. On Friday night, I'd done a little research and I found Amadeus Burgers and Bar Lounge. This is a deceiving place. It has patio seating and there was smoke coming out the front door. But we made reservations and thankfully because this place was packed. The host took us upstairs where they had restored this old, old house, but left exposed beams, hidden doors, and narrow hallways. It was super cool. The menu was intense with tons of snack options, hot dogs, and burgers. As a vegetarian, I had a full goat cheeseburger with fixins and sweet potato fries. It was messy and delicious. I'll have pictures on the vlog. Their drinks were works of art, and my typical gin and tonic had decorations that were fun, and including gummies in it, too. Katie's had a mini candy bar and a rose on a stick, <laughs> it's something definitely we hadn't seen before. Our last night in Bad Valsi, we were able to make reservations at De Capo Pizzeria. From our hotel, we had walked past this restaurant several times, and it always smelled so good. I was so happy they could squeeze us in. I love places that write out the menu for the day or the weekend. It's a sign to me that the chef is preparing something fresh and in season. Such was the case with the Capo. Definitely rated one of the best Italian restaurants in the region. I was so happy we had the opportunity to eat here. Yum. Our weekend in Bad Valsi was another success. 
This little German town is enchanting and a perfect weekend getaway or a stop along the way on a larger European tour. Maybe you're heading to Bavaria, Switzerland, or Austria. Bad Waldsee is a great idea. I hope you enjoyed this itinerary and that you're able to use some of these items for your travel planning as well. Thanks so much for joining me here today. My podcast helps support small businesses and share authentic travel experiences around the globe. Remember to like, follow, and share my podcast. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. For more information, travel specials, and more, sign up for my monthly newsletter. The link's in the podcast description. If you're interested in traveling the world, check out my website, travelwithwendy.net. Thanks for listening today. It's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. Wendy.